Hey Daniel, so don't take this the wrong way, but your last video inspired me to do a beginner's guide to how to shoot and edit YouTube videos using Adobe Premiere CC. So first tip, use manual focus. Now it seems pretty hypocritical to actually use an autofocus device while explaining that you should use manual focus, but whatever. My thing uses a switch that just goes between autofocus and manual focus, but I like to keep it on manual focus and I try to keep it around 0.7 meters away. So you can try to figure it out all yourself, try to get the manual focus. I typically try to hold my hand out like so and try to get the best focus I can on that hand, but you can really use anything, such as this giraffe. Now for setting up your camera, I try to keep the ISO at about 100, but you can always go, I think it's fine to go up to 400, especially on YouTube videos but try to keep that as low as possible. Now aperture quality, I always try to keep that as low as possible, but that's mainly just so this ISO quality can be really low. And then I always try to keep this at 60 frames per second because you want double how many of your frames you, per second you're actually going to shoot. So I'm shooting 30 frames per second, so you're always gonna keep that double. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, you want that to be 120. So that's pretty much it for the camera. That's how you use the camera and try to try to use manual focus. It works a lot better than autofocus where it's always trying to refocus on a subject. But none of this is important if you can't edit it. So I actually use Adobe Premiere CC just like I know you do, Daniel. So I'm going to actually show you how how to edit on Adobe Premiere CC and just basically give you a crash course on how to edit. So I'm just going to click on Adobe Premiere Pro CC and if it doesn't pop up with a window that says to create a project, you can go file, new, project, like so. Project name, I'm just gonna put TDB for the David Bros and then I'm going to say okay and that should create my project. Now in here you might have things set up differently. Right up here I have my window where I view the edit that I'm doing. Over here is all my file management. Down here is going to be my project itself, so I'm going to edit down here. And on the right here, I made the effects. Now I also have another window, so you can go window, workspaces, and then I have color. So I haven't changed color too much, but inside of color right here, it rearranges everything. So I have my sequence down here, my color and everything over here, the effects over here, and this is the main window, so I can edit my coloring there. I'll go into editing a little bit, but not too much. So in here we go to window workspaces, and then I'm just gonna go back to editing, like so. Now inside of editing, you have your media browser. So inside of this media browser, I'm just gonna go to my EOS Digital, which is the SD card that I recorded my video onto. So I'm going to do DCIM 100 Canon, and then in here I can import my media. So I can just click and drag all of this media that I created, right click and say import. And right now, as you can see, this project right here is everything I imported. Now I actually want this window right down here to be my project, so I'm going to say file, new, and this will be sequence. So now this sequence is going to be able to control what I edit. Now in here you have a range of options for your sequence presets. I'm going to go with digital SLR, you go to 1080p as I assume you're filming in, and then we go to DSLR 1080p 30 frames per second, although you can do 24. I'm going to stick with 30, click OK. And now we just created a new sequence. So now we can open up the sequence right down here, like so. And I'm actually going to click and drag this window. So you can click and drag any of these windows that you see and just move them to your liking. So I'm going to click and drag this project TDB up here. This is where I want my files to be stored that I imported. Then I can find the clip I want just by scrubbing through with my mouse and just click and drag that into my project like so. And up on top is your video and down below is your audio. So you have V1, A1, these are all synced up. You can of course move around your audio and your video according to your liking but you have video one, video two, and video three. Now, if I were to just scrub through right now, you will see that I'm right here. But if I were to click and drag another file on there, you will see that this is going to override it. So the video two overrides the video one, and the video three overrides the video two, and so on and so forth. So if I were to grab this, out, this video clip right now, now this will be overriding the video clip down here. Now I found a part that I like, so I'm going to cut my video. So I'm gonna go C, and then this will allow me to cut my video. Now in here, if you can see that the audio and video are linked up. So you can right click on this audio or video clip right here, and you can say unlink if you want. And this will unlink your audio clip from your video clips like so. But you can always just click again and say link like so. So now these are linked up together and they edit together. So if I were to cut the video file, it cuts it down here, like so. 
Now again, you can click V to go back to your normal arrow and then you can just delete little sections of your video, like so. Now to zoom in into the project that you're editing, you just need to hold Option on Mac. I don't really know what it is on Windows, but you just need to hold Alt or Option, I guess, and then just zoom in with your scroll wheel. So you can scroll in and out of your project file, like so. Now as per transitions and whatnot, I typically just do cutscene transitions, so I can just say, okay, I like it right, ending right down there, and I always look at my audio file right down here. So you can always scroll to zoom out on your audio file, like so. Just go over here and zoom. And then you can go over here and see exactly where your audio file ends, and then you can just see, cut it, and then cut your audio video file as well and then delete right after that. Then I want to transition to this other clip that I have. Now every once in a while you might want to overlap. So right here, let's say I have this transition and I want it to transition right after. Typically what I try to do is I try to have a little bit of overlapping on my video and audio file. So this video right here is going to end, but this one's going to start a little bit earlier than this one ends. So you get a nice little transition. Now if you want to add a video effect, you can go over here and you can go to color correction or whatever you want really, and you can add a video effect. I'm going to add color correction onto this, so I like the fast color corrector. So I'm just going to click and drag this onto my video file right over here. And now if I go into this effects right here, go over to the effect controls, now as you can see I have my fast color corrector on top of this video file. So now if I were to scrub right over this, you can see that I can edit the color. Now as for editing color, let's go over here, I'm going to go to window, workspaces, and color. Now for coloring, you'll be presented with this Lumetri Scopes. You can open up this window and this will help you edit color. Now over here, if you hit on this wrench right here, we can say Parade RGB. So we're going to have the RGB Parade alongside with our video. You can think of this as the RGB that's controlling your video right here. So you want the most common areas to be as level as possible and just trying to get everything level. So you can go over here and I'm going to try getting that as level as I can, like so. So that's pretty level. Now if you want to edit your color even further, you can go over to your effects right here and just click and drag. It's called a Luma Corrector. So just click and drag the Luma Corrector onto your video file like so and then head over to your effect controls and right in here you have your luma corrector so what you want to do is you want this so what you want to do is have the red at the very top at 100 and at the very bottom at zero so you want to try making everything very evenly spaced out so if you want you can increase the brightness and this just basically lifts all the rgb parade up and you can also increase the contrast which spreads them all apart like so then we can increase the brightness, increase the contrast, like so. And now, as you can see, I have it pretty well out. And if you want to change the exact look of your video file, you can go over here to Gamma. Now this basically is going to edit everything inside of here. So we're going to click and drag Gamma down, and this is going to allow me to decrease the darkness or increase the brightness like so and you can also increase the contrast level and other things like that so you can just get used to the rgb parade and whatnot i'm still learning about it but either way that's a crash course on using adobe premiere pro and just to export a video you go file export media and inside of here you want to say format h.264 that is pretty much the general bitrate that people use for youtube the preset will be match source dash high bitrate, so it's going to be a very high bitrate that you upload to YouTube. And then down here you have your video. Your width will be 920 by 1080, but you can always switch that off if you want and do something else. And then you can have the frame rate as 29.97, that is your preset that you already added. But you can always change that as well just by unclicking the check mark. Audio, you don't really have to worry about that. AAC is what I use, but you can use whatever. And in here you can say basic video settings, just say match source if you want to be very easy. The bitrate settings, I haven't really played around with this too much, but target bitrate will be 10, maximum bitrate will be 12. It just, uh, it was basically already preset there for me, so I'm keeping it at that. And then when you're done, you just hit export. So yeah, there you go. It's just a quick crash course on how to use Adobe Premiere CC and just getting everything set up. And Daniel, I will see you on Wednesday.